Not everyone believes in the youth of 2015, but we're not everyone. Metro FM. Put your hands up. Celebrating tomorrow's leaders. Today. It's, it's 50 minutes after 11 o'clock as uh, we're about to wrap it up. But before we do, I told you guys I love cars, but, you know, I can't afford most. But Rudolf is here uh, to give me a couple of tips. And I've got a question for you. The first question is, do you budget for the car, then go out shopping? Or should you look for a car and then see if it fits into your budget? Hi, Larato. Well, thank you very much for having me this morning. Um, well, you know, the biggest mistake that people make uh, is when they see the car, they fall in love with it, and uh, without really knowing whether they can afford it, they go ahead and they buy the car. So, um, from, from my perspective, the best way to safeguard yourself from making these emotional decisions is to, to arm yourself with knowledge, and that is to do the research before you even go to the dealer floor to, to start looking at cars. You know, go onto the internet, um, look at the, the car specifications, see how much the car costs, see it, how much all the extra things that goes onto the car costs, uh, and, and, and so on. So um, so you need to try and determine how much you can spend first um, before before you, you go looking at the car. Um, and, and, and the key when buying a car is that is that you need to, to calculate your disposable income. And we'll, go, we'll touch on that just now. But your budget needs to be, re- uh, be realistic. Um, and, and, and that drives your, your buying decision. Okay, so how do you work out your car buying budget? Yeah, so you need to understand uh, what the banks look at when you apply for finance, how the bank will, will look at your ap- finance application. So the National Credit Act says to, that, that the banks, uh, we need to, to work on the client's disposable income. So basically what that means is um, if you take your salary and you take off all of your deductions, like your debit orders, your bond, your water, electricity, even even your, your monthly groceries, then that amount that is left, that is your disposable income. And based on that, the bank will look at your application to see if you if you qualify for, for to buy this car. So how do you, how can you determine your disposable income? Um, on West Bank's website, we have a calculator for you guys where you can go, you put in your monthly income, you can put in all of your expenses, and then on this calculator, it will calculate your disposable income. But it doesn't stop there. We also have a vehicle finance calculator. So once you've determined your disposable income, you can go into this calculator and you put in all of your the car's um, uh, details, like the cash price, the um, deposit that you want to pay, the contract term that you want to finance the car over, and then it spits out for you a, a, a installment. So mm. you can see if your installment matches the, the, your, your disposable income to try and understand if the bank will approve your loan. Okay, so what tips should car buyers know to stay within their budget? Yeah, so um, it's important to, to set a budget and then to stick to, to, stick to it, you know. Um, and you need to remember that buying a car is a five-year commitment. So in this time, um, interest rates might go up. Um, and I think the price of petrol is guaranteed to go up over the next five years. So, so you need to leave a little bit of a buffer for yourself uh, for these costs that go up over this time. Um, you must always n- not forget about the additional costs when it comes to owning a car. For example, um, 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 like licenses and registrations and these kind of things. Um, and, and also, when you buy a car, um, when you want to put in, for example, a, a sunroof or leather seat, mm. these things, they push the, the, the price of the car up. Um, and it impacts your, your, your monthly repayment as well. So you need to think clearly or wisely about these things. Do you really need a sunroof? I mean, is it a nice to have or is it a need to have? Um, and then you can always consider buying these things or paying for them in cash and not putting it on your finance contract. Yeah, That's also an option. Um, and that's basically the tips that we have. Okay, it's like me. I have a convertible, but now I, I just think it's so useless because I hardly even open the top. Exactly, <laughs> and you pay so much extra for that. Exactly. Now, what other costs must car buyers um, buyers think about on top of the uh, monthly car repayments? Yeah, so obviously um, you need to have the car insured um, and you need to shop around for insurance because um, the different companies, they, when they assess you as a risk, then um, you will get different quotations. So, so get two or three or four quotations. And you can even do that on an annual basis to see if you can't bring your premiums down. Um, obviously, you need to budget for, for fuel for the car. And remember, pe- the price of petrol is just going up. So, so it, it might, you need to consider that when you're buying the car. Um, the cost of tires is very important because some cars, they come out with run-flat tires. And we know that they can be two or three times more expensive than just normal tires. 
You need to maintain the car. If you don't maintain the car, the, the car will depreciate even more. And you need to keep the, the, the service book stamped. Um, there's other things like um, that we don't always think of, like licensing the car. That's an annual expense of, of four or five hundred rand. Security, you know, you need to put in a tracking device. That's uh, that's also a monthly debit order that goes off. And then also, last but not least, um, the dreaded e-tolls. Um, um, so you need to to plan for all of these things. And then if you have traffic violations, it also affects your monthly disposable income. Hmm. So all of these factors, it's not just the owning the car and paying the installment, but there's many other factors associated and costs to owning the car. All right. So earlier on, we asked you guys a question and hopefully you sent the right answer to West Bank. And the question was, how much of your income should you spend uh, spend on monthly car repayments and um, you know you had three options A was 60% of your monthly income and finance it over three years B the 24-10 rule or C more than 6,000 on monthly car installments yeah so the answer there is the is B the 24-10 rule so what are we saying with that um, we recommend that you put on that you, when you buy the car, you put as big a deposit as you can, at least twenty percent. It's not compulsory; you don't have to pay a deposit if you don't, if you can't afford it. But it helps you get um, reduce the amount of debt that you take on, and it helps you get out of debt sooner. The four, um, we, we we recommend that you finance a car not longer than four years because. Um, if you finance a car over a longer term, you're paying more interest and then also you stay in debt for longer. Ten is you need to, to, to budget at least 10% of your disposable income for these um, other costs like uh, e-tolls and maintenance and so on. So so really what we're trying to say is to, uh, is to try and take on as little debt as you can, um, financing over it over as short a period as you can. And, and make sure that the car that you buy um, is fit for your purpose so that you don't incur any additional costs um, during the, 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 the time that you have this car. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Rudolf. Really, there's no uh, reason for you to go get a car um, where you're going to be paying 7,000 Rand a month when you actually have a salary of 8,000 Rand because then you only have 1,000 Rand to yourself. Exactly. You don't want to uh, jeopardize your living, um, your living standards uh, because you've now bought a car. Okay. So what did we learn today? We actually learned that we have to stick to our budget, buy within the budget and don't budge while making use of the 24-10 rule, a good rule of thumb is that whatever your budget works out to be you should allow for half of it to be spent on the monthly repayments and then put aside the other half to cover the running costs and mobility expenses if you're not sure how to budget or need help calculating your estimated monthly repayment go to the West Bank Asset Finance Facebook page and West Bank Twitter profile to ask us your budgeting questions is load shedding not the only thing leaving you in the dark don't you worry on next week's West Bank how to hashtag West Bank how to show we will be on Answering your social questions live on air and shedding light on the do's and don'ts whenever applying for car finance.